Hello guys and welcome back. This is the Tyrannis X90 Plus 2019 and the X9 Lite Pro. Welcome to and in this video I'm going to show you how to flash these transmitters to the latest version of OpenTX. How to switch the internal module into the EU LBT mode. How to register and bind an access receiver. How to flash the firmware of the internal and external modules and especially how to flash an access receiver over a smart port wire and over the outer over the air function. First we need to open the OpenTX website to check it for the latest version of OpenTX. At this moment the latest version is OpenTX 2.2.4. Download the installer and install Companion on your computer. Once that is done, run Companion and open the settings. First check the radio type on the radio profile tab and look for your Tyrannus X9 D Plus 2019 or X9 Lite. And as you can see, in this case we don't find these receivers. So at the present moment we can't use OpenTX 2.2.4. That's why we need to download the latest nightly build of OpenTX 2.2.3 install and run it on your computer. I think it's just a question of time until OpenTX releases a stable version of OpenTX with the new radio types. And now we can find the Tyrannus X90 Plus 2019 and X9 Lite. Select the radio you want to flash. You also need to select the firmware options you want to install. I only need the Lua scripts and the Flex R9M options. Keep in mind that you can't use the Flex and EU option at the same time. Then you need to select your SD structure path and if you want you can also select the two options for appending a version number to the firmware file name and to write the firmware to the transmitter after downloading. On the application settings tab we need to select nightly builds. You won't need this option anymore after OpenTX has released a stable version of OpenTX for the new FreeSky transmitters, but at the moment we still need a nightly build. Once all settings are done, we can close the settings. Now we need to start our transmitter in bootloader mode. For this, we need to press both horizontal trim switches inwards while powering the transmitter. Next, we can connect the Tyrannus with the computer. Then we can go back to the companion application and we can click on download. Check for updates download the firmware and write it to your transmitter. Now your Tyrannus is updated to the newest version of OpenTX. Next we need to go back to the OpenTX website to download the SD card content. Get the right content for your transmitter and download it on your computer to copy it to your SD card of your Tyrannus. Then go to the tools folder of your Tyrannus and copy the Lua script for changing the internal module into the FCC or EU LBT mode. This Lua script doesn't come with the SD card content. I think it's just a workaround and in future OpenTX releases we won't need it anymore. But at the moment you need this Lua script 
ask FreeSky to get it or write me an email or maybe I will link it in the description below. Next, we can go to the FreeSky website to download the firmware for the internal module of our Tyrannus. First, I'm downloading the internal firmware for the X9D Plus 2019, followed by the firmware for the X9 Lite. Here we only need the firmware for the internal module. The other downloads are offering an OpenTX file. We have created a newer and personalized one with the help of Companion, so we don't need these files. Next, you can also download the firmware for your R9 modules and R9 or X-series receivers. For example, I'm downloading the firmware for the R9 Mini Auto receiver. Basically, it depends on the receivers and external modules you want to use. Once you have downloaded the firmware for your modules and receivers, copy and paste the firmware files onto your firmware folder of your SD card of your Tyrannus. Now we can start our Tyrannus. Don't care about the nightly build warning. Go to the radio setup menu with long pressing the menu button. Then page over to tools. Select change ISRM mode for changing the internal module into the EU LBT mode. Now we page over to version. Here you can see that both receivers are flashed to the latest version of OpenTX. And in the modules RX version menu you can also see the selected ISRM mode. Next we open the firmware folder of the SD card content to flash the internal and external modules. First I'm selecting the firmware of the internal module of the X9 Lite. Select Flash Internal Module. Next, I show you how to flash the external R9M Lite Pro module. Choose the corresponding firmware file and select Flash External Module. All the steps are working the same way with the Tyrannus X9D Plus 2019. For example, I'm also flashing the external R9M module of my X9D Plus 2019. Next, I show you how to flash a receiver. First, you need to connect a smart pod wire to plus, ground and smart pod of your receiver. Then you need to connect it to your smart pod of your Tyrannus X9 Lite. For flashing a receiver with the X9D Plus 2019, you need to connect the receiver to the three bottom pins of the module bay. Make sure to connect it to the right plus, ground and signal pins. 
The pin layout is different to the pin layout of the smart port of the Tyrannus X9 Lite. Once the flashing progress was successful, you can disconnect the receiver. In the following, I am going to show you how the registration and binding of an access receiver works. It's the same procedure on the internal and external module. In this example, I am binding the R9 Mini Ota with my R9 Lite Pro. For this, I am selecting the access protocol. While I am selecting the R9M Lite Pro access, you can also see the different flex options for the R9 module. In order to register a receiver, we need to select register to put the transmitter module into the register status. Then power your receiver while holding the bind button on the receiver. The red and green LEDs are indicating the register status. Then we need to select enter on the transmitter. Once the registration is completed, we can unplug the battery and we can go ahead to the bind option on the transmitter to bind the receiver. For this we need to select the bind option and to power on the receiver again. By the way, we can use up to three receivers with the redundancy function. Last, I show you how to update an OTA receiver over the air. For this, select the corresponding firmware file and select Flash Receiver OTA. Then power your receiver and the update process starts automatically. That's it, I hope I have shown you everything you need to know to use the new FreeSky transmitters and receivers. Now I'm pretty exhausted after all this testing, explaining and video editing. If you have any questions, write it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.